Let's dive right in. Today, we're going to make a phospholipid bilayer in a few minutes using some pre-made assets and quick tricks for getting proteins. We're going to start by grabbing the default cube, hitting X and deleting it. From there, we're actually going to skip over to Gumroad, and this is my page, the CG Figures page on Gumroad, and you can download this free asset for phospholipid bilayers. This would take a good bit longer if we were actually making bilayers ourselves, but this is available for free and comes in good variety, so we're going to make use of it today. If you want a full walkthrough on how to use this, the link is in the description. Once you've downloaded that, let's go back to Blender. I'm going to go to File, Append, and then I'm going to come to this file titled CG Figures Phospholipid Bilayers. I'll click on that. And then I'm going to move to Object, and I'm going to import the High Density Bilayer. If I wanted to, I could also import different styles of bilayer, but I'm going to use the default one, which I believe is Style 4 Curved, and it'll just bring that in when I click on this. So High Density Bilayer, there it is, and very quickly, we already have our Phospholipid Bilayer. And it comes with a material, so if I hit Z and come into Material Preview, you can see there's a preset material, and we can change this a little bit later. So I'm going to come up to this funnel, enable the render view and a few of the other options. Then I'm going to hide this in the view, and I'm going to hide the high density bilayer as well. We're going to start by making a transmembrane protein, or a simple channel protein. I'm going to hit Shift A, add in a cylinder, and I'll change some of the default options. So instead of vertices at 32, I'll change this to 64. And instead of cap fill type as n-gon, I'm going to change to nothing. You can see we have a hollow cylinder. I'll right click on the cylinder, shade smooth, and now I'm going to come to the modifier properties tab, and I'm going to add a few modifiers. First, a solidify to control the thickness there, and I can bring that in or out. You can see that that's making the channel a little bit more narrow or a little wider. Then I'm going to add a displacement modifier. I'll hit this little button right here, and that's going to bring me to the texture properties tab. I'll add a new texture, and this one will be a clouds texture. Now, one thing that I should have done first is tab into edit mode, hit control R and scroll up a good number of times until you have roughly squares across the cylinder. So something like this would be just fine. Right click to drop those in place. And now when we tab back, you can see we have a little bit more of an even distribution of this noise or clouds texture. We're going to come back to the modifier properties and we'll drop the strength to about 0.2 to have something that looks a little bit more controlled. We're then going to hit control two and that's going to add a subdivision surface modifier so everything smooths out nicely. And this is the basics of our transmembrane protein. We can change the channel size with the solidify. We can change how pronounced the disruption is with the displacement. But we're not going to do that for now. We're going to actually move on. Let's start by putting this protein in the bilayer. So I'll re-enable the high density bilayer. And you can see this is actually just about the right size to peek through both sides. If it wasn't, you would just have to scale it up or down by hitting S and then Z and then scaling it. If you wanna keep the same size, but have it be a little bit wider, you can hit S and Shift Z, and then that will actually let you go in or out. And usually you get a number of proteins that resemble this one in most figures for bilayers. We'll also take this opportunity to add a material. So I'm going to add something that matches this material roughly. I'll come to the material properties, hit new, and we're just going to go with a simple, simple default principle BSDF, change the base color to something sort of in the same range, and I'd like this to be a little shiny, so we'll bring the roughness down to 0.2 as well. And something like that is not bad at all. One thing you might notice is that we actually still have the phospholipids visible inside this channel protein, and we probably don't want that. So we're going to solve that problem. Now we could add in another cylinder, but if you had already moved this out of frame, the cylinder would appear here, you'd have to line them up. So the easiest way to do this is just hit Shift D with this protein selected, and you can see I've renamed it to transmembrane protein. So I'm going to Shift D to duplicate that. Then I will come to the modifier properties and I will remove all of the modifiers. I'm going to hide everything else in the scene so we can focus on just this cylinder. And what we're going to do is tab into edit mode, hit Alt H, deselect everything. Make sure that we are selecting edges by hitting two for edge select. And then we'll zoom in, hit Alt and select one of these horizontal edges at the top. And then we'll do the same thing at the bottom holding shift as well so we can get both. Then we'll hit F to fill those in and it will tab back so that we have our cylinder. And this is actually going to be a cutout. So let's re-visualize our transmembrane protein and our high density bilayer. We're going to grab the cylinder and we'll actually name this cylinder. So we're going to call this cutter. And what we're going to do now is make sure we have a few add-ons enabled. We're going to come to edit, preferences, and we're going to go to add-ons and we're gonna look for three add-ons that we're gonna enable. 
The first is bool tool. The second is modifier tools. And the last one is extra mesh. So what we're going to look for here is add, it's right near the top. We're going to look for add mesh extra objects. And with this one and the other two enabled, we're going to continue working. So grab your cutter object, then shift and click the transmembrane or the high density bilayer, then control and minus on the number pad. And this is going to quickly create a Boolean. Now, right now, nothing has happened, but that's because we have to modify the bilayer. So grab the bilayer and you'll see there's now this Boolean operation here. We're going to simply move this above the mesh particles. And when we do that, you can see now everything has moved out of the way. But what you might also notice is that some of them have moved out of the way a little bit closer than we might like. And to fix that problem, we're going to grab our cutter and we're simply going to hit S, Shift Z and scale it in just to about there. Now you can see that our transmembrane protein is resting nicely inside the bilayer, but you can actually see straight through it. To make sure that this will actually move with the transmembrane protein, if we want to move it around, we're going to make sure our cutter is selected. Then we will shift and click the transmembrane protein in the scene, and we'll hit Control P, and we'll choose Parent to Object. Then we will hide the cutter, and what that means is now we can grab this transmembrane protein, and I could hit G and Shift Z, and I can move this wherever I want. You can see that the bilayer is updating as I move through because I'm changing the distribution of phospholipids. But once it's settled in place, it'll be just fine. Now, the other types of proteins that you usually see are membrane proteins, something that sits on top, and they're usually very simple little objects. Now, Blender has a very convenient way to make those. And what we're going to do is hide everything once again, just so we have a clear workspace. And if you enabled extra objects, you'll now see if you hit Shift A and come to Mesh, there's an option for Rock Generator. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hit Rock Generator. And for number of rocks, we're going to add, let's say, five to start. And you can see I've added five rocks. Now, these are actually going to be our membrane proteins, the ones that sit on top of the membrane. So left click anywhere on the screen to hide that menu option. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hit G and X and separate these out from one another. So we can see what we're working with. Now you can see they all have a significant number of modifiers applied. If you enable the modifier tools, what you can now do is simply hit toggle stack. And if you're working in 2.9 or later, you can grab modifiers over here and drag one of these subsurface modifiers to the bottom. And now it's quite smooth. And this is almost perfect, it's ready to use. So we're gonna do the same thing for all of our rocks, and then we'll choose the ones that we like the most to use as the final membrane proteins. Now, I happen to like this approach because it's relatively easy and makes it straightforward and quick to do. One of the things that's worth noting here is that these are obviously not exact proteins. These are schematic replicas, so do with that what you will. We're going to re-enable the high-density bilayer, and we'll also re-enable the transmembrane protein. We'll come to the collections over here, grab our first rock, shift, and then click the bottom rock. And you can see we have them all selected right there. So we'll hit G and Z and bring them up and G and Y just to move them over here so we can kind of see what we're working with. I also have all of them selected right now. So I'm going to give them the same material as our channel protein by hitting shift, clicking the channel protein, hitting control L, and then making links to the materials. So now everything has the same material. And I could simply grab these, move them wherever I want by hitting G and Shift Z, and then I can scale them up appropriately. I'm going to hit Shift Z to make this a little bit of a flatter protein. I'll move this one over here and change that to something like this as well. And I generally find the rocks are actually pretty good for this purpose. They scale well, they integrate in the protein membrane, and they generally actually look pretty decent. So something like that, we can have a little one over here, and we can have another one right there. And if we come to our material preview mode, we can now see we have a phospholipid bilayer with a convincing distribution of proteins very quickly, very easily. If you wanted to, you can also come to the phospholipid pair itself, re-enable the subdivision surface. So you can see that's much smoother. So this is what you'll actually get in the final render. One thing worth noting about all the rocks, which I think it is advisable to rename as membrane proteins, is that the level of subsurf is very high in the render. So if you want to have shorter render times, simply reduce that from three to two for both of these, and you can do that for every single one. And that will just give you a little bit of a faster image rendering. Now, this happens to look pretty decent in Eevee, and that means that you could actually set this up to render in probably under a minute, even if your computer is not that powerful. And to demonstrate that fact, I'll go ahead and do the render setup now. 
So I'm going to come to Render Properties, Film, we'll change to Transparent Film, and then I'm going to use an HDRI. So in Material Preview right now, we're using one of the built-in HDRIs, which you can access over here, and we can explore different looks for this scene by simply changing the lighting. Let's see what we have. This one's not bad. And I'm also going to change some of the materials here so that some of the proteins are a little distinct. I'll come to Material Properties, and I'm going to hit this little button right here to separate the material for just this one. And I'll change the color and make this protein a little bit more blue. I'll do the same for this one over here, and I'll make this one a little bit more red. And we could do this throughout, and we could have all kinds of different things. I'll use the blue one for this, and I'll use the red one for that. Now, if you really wanted to have something like a little spiral chain or an actual protein in here, then there are other resources that I recommend using. Specifically, I recommend coming to Brady Johnston's channel and looking at Blender for Biochemists, where he shows how you can make these actual alpha helices, beta sheets type structures. So if you want to do that and insert those into your scene, feel free to check this out. It's a little bit longer, but it is worthwhile if you really need that level of detail or realism. And if you want to add regular molecules, you can check out my tutorial on how to make any molecule in Blender and insert that into the scene. But for general schematics, I find this is pretty good. The type of thing you would see as a piece of cover art or sort of a promo work. Now let's go ahead and finish setting up that render. So I'm going to come to Render Properties. I'm going to stay in Eevee and we're going to actually use the built-in lighting. So we'll start by enabling ambient occlusion just so we get some nice shadows. I'll open a new window, come to the shader editor, and instead of object, we're going to change to world. Then I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to add an input or rather I'm going to add a texture, an environment texture. I'll put that right here. I'll connect this color into here. And what I'm going to now do is I'm going to hit open, navigate to where I have Blender installed. So for me, it's the C drive, program files, Blender foundation, whichever version you're using, 2.91 in this case for me, open the data files. Then we're going to go to studio lights, world, and you can see these are actually all of our scene lights. And I think right now we have the sunset enabled, but let's try using the courtyard. And if we come to rendered, we can see this is the lighting that we have. If you have access to other HDRIs, which you can download from hdrihaven.com for free and use those, I find any number of these are also quite good. I'm personally quite prone to the Preller drive for this specific approach because I think it gives good lighting that you can use pretty quickly out of box. And now we'll simply set up the camera. So I'm going to hit Control, Alt, and Zero. And that gives me my camera. From there, I'll hit N to open this side menu. Click the camera to make sure it's selected, come to view, snap camera to view, and now I can navigate around my scene and the camera will snap accordingly and it'll just follow me until I've got the area that I want ready to render. And I think something like this would be just fine. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show just before we render to really sort of spice this up is I'm going to grab our transmembrane protein, hit G and shift Z and bring it right to the front of the view. And the reason that I want to do this is because often what you'll see is these proteins sort of bisected. So you can see the cross section as we go through. The way we're going to do that is similar to how we cut out the area in the phospholipid bilayer. We're just going to use a Boolean object on our transmembrane protein. So from where it is, you can see I've now moved it and the cursor's over here, but I'd like the object to appear here. So I'm going to click the membrane protein, hit shift S, and then I'll choose cursor to selected. From there, I will add in a mesh cube and I'm going to just scale that up a little bit and a little bit in the y-axis as well to cover the whole protein. Then we'll move it along G until it is roughly bisecting. Something like that will be just fine. From there, shift and click the transmembrane protein, hit control minus, and again, you need bool tools for this to work, but we now have a nice clean cutout of our transmembrane protein. And we're also just going to hit G and X and move that just a little bit more until you can sort of see it outside the phospholipids. Something like that should be just fine. Then you can see that's already hidden, but I'll hit H to hide the cube, zero on the number pad to come back to the camera. And now very, very quickly, we have the type of figure that you could use in any kind of presentation for journal cover art, all that sort of stuff. If you want to change aspects of the phospholipid bilayer, I indicate how to do that in the walkthrough for that video. But you could simply come over here, grab the base color value for the phospholipid pair. And again, there are different phospholipid styles that you could use. And if we want this to be blue or say green, yellow, we could do that quite quickly by changing it. 
In this case, all I'm going to do is actually bring the saturation down just a little bit so it's perhaps more subtle. Something like that would be more than fine. And you can do the same thing for everything else. Render this scene, we'll hit F12 and we'll actually see how long it takes for this to render. So there we go, just about 20 seconds for that one. You can see we actually have a decent looking figure. I'd probably clean up the edges here just so that these phospholipids were not showing in the protein. But otherwise you could take this, save it as a transparent background image, PNG, put this in a PowerPoint, put this in a presentation, use it however you like, and that wraps it up. Hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.